The other day I found that someone recently bought NFTs of a Mark 1 Mustang, first edition, which means the first one to come out the factory. So they bought this NFT for $30,000 at the Barrett Jackson auctions. Hello again, my name is Lassica from Seedross Cars, welcome to the channel and welcome new viewer, I hope you become a new subscriber and I hope you enjoy the car content that I put out on a semi-weekly basis. Let's get on with the video. So for long time viewers of the channel, you can consider this one an unofficial addition to the sketchy history series but with a different title, a sketchy future. Pretty appropriate if you ask me, because even though I believe that this tech will revolutionized content and asset management in the future, it's too early to tell now. Maybe I could be an early adopter and sell some of my drawings as NFTs, but I'm currently a resident in the sovereign nation of Brokistan, hence my disposable income being unable to buy even one fraction of Ethereum or other major uh, cryptocurrency to justify paying for the handling costs, so believe me, I looked into it. Plus, in my opinion, it's too much of a risk to invest in anything when it's hyped up to a crowd-roaring degree, crypto included. So what exactly are NFTs? No, they're not new Ferrari Testarossas, get it, Tezos reference, eh? and they're not part of that rapper's merch line, no. NFT actually stands for non-fungible token, now what is fungible? Well, fungible is simply a legal term for something that can be replaced or swapped out with another copy of the same item, or even an item in the same category. So simply put, non-fungible means unique. To make things simpler, you can think of NFTs as a digital key of sorts that gives you exclusive access and ownership to digital media. Think of it like rich people who buy pieces of classical artwork from Van Gogh and Monet, except digitally. There can only be one original painting, and owning an NFT is kinda like insurance against people trying to claim ownership of it, and it's a way for people to protect their investment in the digital artscape. In other words, it's a, it's a certificate of authenticity blended in with the very article it's representing, but it's digital. This makes sense because you can share copies of an original piece of digital media, whether it's text, a website, an image, or a video, it doesn't matter. But who's to say where the original came from, or who created it? NFTs serve to provide a solution to that issue. An NFT gives ownership to the individual who pays for a specific piece of digital media, but the original creator still keeps their legal rights, such as copyright. And the NFT also gives them the ability to earn royalties for their work every time a copy is sold or the NFT exchanges hands. And this brings us back to the $30,000 Mustang NFT that I was mentioning in the video opener. Due to its intentionally exclusive nature, the NFT of a first edition Mustang Mach 1, which includes a special, a specially filmed video, unique photographs and illustrations, as well as pictures of the 001 VIN. Uh, a VIN is basically a vehicle identification number, I think the name is pretty self-explanatory, but it, it essentially tells manufacturers and eagle-eyed car enthusiasts uh, what specific model a car is and what was the production number from the factory, essentially tell, uh, telling them whether it was the first car to come out the factory or the 256th. A VIN number can tell all. So that NFT was actually sold or auctioned off for the price of a base model EcoBoost Mustang with a few options. At least that's how much, how much it cost at the time of making this video. So the question is, why not get an EcoBoost Mustang instead? Sure, you might get laughed at by the Mustang clique for owning a Mustang with half the cylinders of a GT, but by golly, the EcoBoost was built in the way the four almighty intended it and it's still a Mustang. So unless you committed the cardinal sin of buying a car, especially one like the Mustang, to flex on the plebs, you should be proud of your purchase. I know, I know, weird tangent, but okay. The question still remains, why spend $30,000 getting an NFT when you could just, I don't know, spend a couple of minutes just clicking or tapping through websites and just download the pictures and videos for yourself? To most of us, it seems like a no-brainer, but 
To some people, uh, they just crack their knuckles and say, it's big brain time. But some people are investment minded and they see that owning a unique, irreplaceable digital piece of history can actually pay off in the long run. I mean, to be fair, it's just memorabilia. It's not a piece of history unless the car in question is like a landmark of automotive history or something like that. What was worth $30,000 today could well be worth $300,000 in the future. And in my opinion, a lot of the value is greatly overinflated by internet hype and wanton praise. Kind of like what I did for the Bugatti Veyron video, which you should check out because I need the views. <laughs> Just kidding. But seriously, especially when it comes to the cursed used car market and future classics. Yeah, everything is classic. Everything is legendary. La -de -da -de -da -de -da. And prices should reflect that because I'm looking for a quick buck and I know what I have. So much for actual historical value then. <sighs> Yikes, I'm in a sour mood today and this is supposed to be semi-educational. Anyways, it is the future value that people who buy car NFTs are considering when they pay the prices they do. Of course, there were other NFTs of different first edition cars like the Hummer EV and the Ford Bronco sold at that same auction and the proceeds went to charity, yay, so that's good. And the first edition cars were also sold at the same time. Now this is but one example of the NFT rearing its head in the car industry. And of course there are going to be many more examples to come after I publish this video but we can only theorize about what the future holds for the NFTs in relation to the car industry and car culture, which is actually what we're going to be talking about next. So what impact will NFTs have on the car industry and the car culture? Like I said before, at this point we can only theorize and here are some of my theories and some theories I pulled from the internet of what NFTs could be used for in the car industry and how it will impact car culture. Unique memorabilia, collector pieces, 3D models, behind the scenes concept art of new cars could also be sold as NFTs. Like how the Barrett Jackson auctions did with the first edition cars that went under the hammer. Now that's one example. Also one possible use of NFTs could be the creation of digital certificates of authenticity as well as the documented history and maintenance and repairs for various classic cars, rare or otherwise, which would then be used by auditors and of course buyers to gauge the value of the car, as well as the credibility of the seller's ownership, thereby significantly reducing, if not eliminating, the risk of scammers trying to pull one off on the buyers by selling either a stolen car or faking the VIN number to the win to disguise any insurance write-off among any many other ways that they will try to scam buyers. Of course, cataloging every car that comes on sale will be an arduous process, but one that'll may, that may offer many benefits in the future. But there is one issue that I thought about. How will the NFT affect the pricing of the actual car? Will the NFT and the car be sold separately? Will it be included in the final price of the car increasing the purchase value or is it just going to be given for free with the car? Only time will tell. But looking into the future where our corporate overlords and the world governments have imposed self-driven cars on our daily lives, I actually shudder because I'll have to witness the death of car culture from today's faction wars and fan pouring all the way to the elimination of the driving process altogether. Why oh why, it's especially worse considering I got my driver's license at the death knell of the internal combustion engine and driving itself. Oh. Anyways, when the soulless robot cars come a knocking and shared car ownership becomes a thing, <coughs> communism, <coughs> experts say that NFTs can actually help determine the percentage of ownership, which may help legally settle disputes between neighbors about who gets to be driven by the car? That just sounds wrong in this day and age, but sounds just dandy to the neophiles who don't mind giving up their personal independence to get from A to B. I love the world. Of course, those are all the theories I can think of and I could find while, uh, after doing research. But if you want to know more about NFTs, 
I've left some articles and videos in the description down below. And this is where I say thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more car topic videos published on a semi weekly basis. Now if you want another example of the way digital ownership has affected car culture, check out my video on Roof, Porsche and the video game industry which I will link in the info card, the description and the end screen. Hope you have a great week ahead of you and this is Lassica signing out, peace.